All right, President Biden is headed back to the United States after his first trip to Asia with a series of crises on his hand, including the unprecedented surge at the southern border. According to Biden's own officials, the surge of 8,200 migrants a day will not let up despite Friday's court ruling keeping that Trump-era Title 42 health restriction in place. Just yesterday, hundreds of migrants were released from the Customs and Border Patrol into the United States. And according to a new piece in the New York Times, Biden's main strategy is to, you know, simply flood the nation's shelters to house and feed these folks. Buried in that piece, the Times admits that this strategy is to, quote, stave off politically explosive images of chaos and disorder ahead of the November midterms. A bit political, if you will. Joining us now is House Foreign Affairs Committee member, California Congresswoman Young Kim. Congresswoman, always good to see you. I, I was trying to think about how to put this in perspective. And if you think about it, there have been 2.7 million borders encounters since President Biden took office. That's greater than the population of 14 states. I want to know where, from where you are in California, what kind of a burden is this having on resources and what do you see on a daily basis? On a daily basis, what I hear from my constituents is that this Biden administration has to get a handle on the border uh, border crisis. Look, I'm a freshman, but in my short time being in office, I went down to the border three times. Biden mm -hmm. and Kamala has, Harris has yet to go down because you know why? They're afraid to admit that there is crisis. We know our border, border patrol is doing all they can, and now their jobs will become even harder as the Biden administration administration doubles down on ending Title 42 without a replacement plan to help prevent that overcrowding of facilities. Look, I introduced a legislation called the Comprehensive Southern Border Strategy Act because I saw we have federal law that requires us to have a strategy for our northern border, but not for our southern border. So I introduced the bill to change that. That includes overview of what the current security crisis and risks are at hand. We need to have a better review of what tools that the Department of Homeland Security has to combat drug trafficking with a focus on fentanyl. Look, I talk very closely with the Orange County Sheriff Department, who is 100% behind supporting my legislation, the Comprehensive Southern Border Strategy Act. And they tell us that they are dealing with over 205 pounds of suspected fentanyl that they apprehended, and over 145,000 pills were suspected to contain some level of fentanyl in just the first two months of this year. As long as this wow. crisis wow. persists, our communities will suffer. And yet, Biden administration continues to show mixed signal. They act like they're concerned, but they're actively pursuing policies like ending the migration protection protocols or remaining Mexico policy that Trump uh, administration have put in place and it worked because we're asking migrants to remain in Mexico while we process right. your asylum into the United States. It's safer that yeah. way, but they are trying to get rid of this. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about the national security threat. You talked about the drugs that are pouring across our border, the fentanyl crisis. Just hours ago, we learned that an ISIS-affiliated suspect was arrested for a plot to kill former President George W. Bush. I mean, how seriously is this administration taking it? I mean, what is it going to take for them to take it seriously? Well, apparently they are not taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. We have thousands of gotaways that are in our communities, and we have we hear reports after uh, reports that those gotaways we don't know where they are, but they're infiltrating into our own communities. I work closely, like I said, with the Orange County Sheriff Department. They are part of my human trafficking task force. They are part of my crime advisory committee. They tell us this is a serious issue and it's depleting our resources, and we need to make sure that we provide more resources. And again, the legislation that I have will help us identify the security threats that we have. We will be able to identify, like the Del Rio sector that I visited just in the month of uh, March, the uh, automated surveillance tower, which is only put in place in Del Rio sector. We're trying to find out how much that will cost, what mile by mile strategy is needed because California, Arizona, and uh, Texas borders, we have different 
challenges there. Therefore, we have to come up with a mile by mile strategy. So places where we need to finish the wall, places where we need to more enhance our border patrol agents, or what is it needed? Tell us how much it's gonna cost and give us the justification. We are serious about taking care of and taking back the control of the southern borders. And that's what my legislation yeah. does. And I hope it gets passed through once we get back to session next week. Well, if these uh, elections are any indication, it looks like you guys will be in the majority and you will be able to finally get something like that passed. So, Congressman Kim, thank you for being with us and thanks for your leadership on this issue. It's important to have your voice as part of this discussion. I look forward to continuing the fight.